Tracy is a child, was a child, say, in a children's home desperate to be fostered. And I got the original idea because I saw some photos of real children who, and there was a special campaign to try and get foster parents for them. And I couldn't help wondering, what must it feel like to be in this situation? And so suddenly, just this character, this feisty, determined little kid came into my mind who can be really difficult at times, but she's no one else to stick up for her, so she sticks up for herself. And um, I loved writing that story. It was one of the very few that seemed literally to write itself. Um, I didn't really think it would be a particular success. Life for children can be rough around the edges. Is that what you wanted to show? Did you want books that children could identify with? Exactly. I mean, I didn't have um, a very sort of costed middle class mm -hmm. upbringing. Um, we lived on a council estate. My mum and dad were forever having rows. And although I, I loved reading and read my way through all the, the Blightons and the Stretfields and everything else I could get my hands on in the library, I couldn't help thinking that these children aren't really like me. Mm -hmm. And so, and not that I was particularly like a Tracy Beaker, but I've always been interested in children who don't quite fit in. And so, um, yes, Tracy, I think, has to be my most favorite character. Your other books as well, they've never really shied away from the harsh realities of life. You've been very upfront and honest uh, with your readers, some of whom are as young as eight years old. You've covered subjects like abandonment, divorce, alcoholism, poverty, depression, suicide, and of course, the care system. Oh gosh, you do make them sound oh, no, dire. It's, it's interesting because how do you find the tone and the language to speak to children because these are some subjects that their parents will find it difficult to yes. talk to them about. Anything violent, anything too upsetting is off, off the page. It's happened and it will be mentioned. But I, I would hate to traumatise any child. It's very, very difficult because children nowadays, when they, they watch television or they look at things on YouTube, they, they are far more aware than perhaps adults realise of all sorts of things going on. I try and write as truthfully as I can, but I try and be comforting. I do think humour is a way of coping with bad things. What do you think children worry about today in 2018? What do you think their main concerns are? Because you're all about putting yourself in the mindset of the child. I think they worry about having friends. And um, there are lots of anguished emails I get from, you know, somebody's friend has gone off with somebody else. I think they're far more worried about the way they look now. It's the sort of thing that, you know, when I was a, a child, a dystopian novel would be all about a way that um, children and young people, their minds are being manipulated. And now in, in a sometimes benign way, I think that is happening. Now you've brought Tracy Beaker back. We are exploring the adult Tracy Beaker through the eyes of her daughter. Are these the kind of issues that you're going to find yourself writing about and exploring yourself? This book, supposedly by Jess Beaker, Tracy's daughter, and if there's a, a sequel at all, I think we will keep Jess about 10 or 11. A report that came out recently from the Children's Commissioner, which found that 50,000 vulnerable children under the age of five are living in households with, with what they're calling a toxic trio of domestic abuse, drug or alcohol addiction, mental health problems as well. And some of these children may not even be on social services radar, so the number could be far higher. The Children's Commissioner herself, Anne Longfield, said more funding is urgently needed, but the shortfall by 2020 could be as much as two billion pounds. Should social care be better funded? I think definitely it should be. The, the trouble is there's such a demand. I did hear a while ago about a scheme somewhere where they had um, middle-aged women who successfully brought up a lot of children um, to take families who were struggling under their wing a bit and maybe you know if a mum is exhausted with several kids all around her just to bustle in every now and then and say put your feet up dear I'll do the washing up and you know why is, do you think the baby's crying so much and all the rest of it who knows how that might work it, so I'm, more social responsibility I, than government intervention I think so I think so you're back into the groove now with Tracy Beaker 
you wouldn't commit to a sequel when I spoke to you about it a little earlier. But now there are so many new themes to explore and Tracy is an adult dealing with different issues. Are you tempted? I am tempted because um, I have been talking to quite a lot of people about my mum, Tracy Beaker, and many people have said, well, come on, what does happen next to Jess and Tracy? So I'm thinking about it. But certainly it won't be the next book because that's already written and that's something else entirely. But um, I, Tracy is there in my head still, so is Jess. I, I don't think they're going to go away.